I just introduced to you the dear brother, uh, uh, Adil Chan Atuchat is from uh, Sydney. He's originally from Fiji. Ancestor came from India. Uh, background is uh, Hindu, but God somehow miraculously uh, did a miracle to his whole family. And uh, we are so thankful that he can come and share with us. Uh, even as he just came from another service, I believe. All to you now, dear brother Adil, we welcome you in the name of the sweet name of the Lord Jesus Christ to Malaysia Zoom service, Saving Grace Zoom service. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor David. God bless you. Uh, praise the Lord Church. It is an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord and to come before the Lord and Honor, honor him. As Pastor has already introduced, introduced, my name is Adil and I'm from uh, Sydney, Australia. Yes, I do come from a small island of Fiji with a Hindi background. And today I will speak the mighty power of God, the power of God changes one's life for better. I'd like to thank Pastor David for giving me this opportunity to bring this word before thy people. And I thank him so much. And uh, I would also like to thank Auntie Esther Alfred that she's been with me for many years, nurturing me and guiding me. Um, and disciplining me before the word of God. Amen. Amen. So let us, I'll just quickly pray before we go into the word of God. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus, we thank you even for this morning. Lord, we thank you the opportunity that you've given us that by your mercy and your grace, we have risen up. It is, we, we cannot take it for granted. Many have closed their eyes, but we are so blessed that we have been given another opportunity that we may come before you with a thankful and a humble heart. Lord, yet we were sinners. You gave your only good and son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, the name above every name. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we acknowledge that you are the great I am. There is none like you, Father. You are awesome. You are amazing. You are a sovereign God. God who is able. Lord, this hour, I welcome the Holy Spirit, our helper, our teacher, our comforter, our counselor. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, even this time, that whatever I may speak, may that edify your name, Lord, that it will be for the glory of the Lord, Father. Lord, I pray that through this message, there will be many soul salvation. And, Lord, heavens rejoices when there's a soul added to the kingdom of God. And we say thank you, Father God. Mm -hmm. We love you. We bless you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let us, if you got your Bible, you may open up uh, the scripture from Mark 11, 22 to 24. It's Mark 11. 22 to 24. We will read it and then we go and study the word. Amen? Amen. So verse 22, it says, So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. That is a very powerful message there itself. Have faith in God. When we're talking about God, is the God who created 
heaven and earth. God who created us in his own image. We must submit to him and have faith in him and believe in him. Uh, verse 23. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done and will have whatever he says. So when you believe and do not doubt in yourself, you have faith in the word of God. As we know, in the book of John, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. When you believe in the word of God, and you confess with your mouth, it shall come to pass. Amen? Verse 24. That is our main scripture. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. I'll read it once again. And all, we all read it together and see what the message is there. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Amen? So, when I look at this scripture and it says, therefore, I say to you, whatever. Now, what is this whatever in our life today? It may be our health. It may be our financial situation. It could be our family situation. It could be our job. It can be our ministry. It could be our nation. There are so many things we are surrounded by. But the, but the scripture says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask. So there's no limit that you can only ask for this, but not the other. The Bible clearly says, whatever things you ask, according to his will, it shall be done for you. Amen. The, in the same scripture it says, Whatever things you ask, ask, let's underline that word, ask. John, book of John 14, 14 says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. We, we, we must take this scripture very seriously. Ask in John 14, 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The Bible says, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands strong forever and ever. If the Lord has said, says, if the Lord says it, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. The most critical point here, first of all, we need to know who our God is. And at the same, the Lord must know who we are. There must be a connection. We, we cannot just keep running on the road or keep working and keep flying from one nation to the other. And then you get into a situation and say, Lord, but the Bible says, John 14, 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Yes, Lord will do it. 
but you, you must have that relationship. You must have an encounter with yeah. the Lord. He is faithful. He is everlasting forever and ever. The Bible says he was saying yesterday, today, and forever. That is the living God we serve in today. How powerful is that? If someone puts a hand, if you are going through a circumstance situation and, and the principal or the prime minister or the president of the nation comes and puts hand on your shoulder and says, hey, if you ask anything, you have a need for anything, how do you, how do you feel? We are people of sinless nature, as sin nature. Imagine, we are, we as fathers to our children, we give so much of gifts. We are, you know, we are not as holy, but our God is. We have made mistake. We have done the wrong things in our life. We have committed sins, knowingly, unknowingly. We, 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 we even not aware of what we have done. And imagine, oh, our father says, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I take that scripture so powerfully. Whenever I am in need of anything, I bring the word of God before the Lord. The Lord, today I need you. Without you, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. But it is you who is within me that can make a shift in my life, shift in my family's life, shift in my job, shift in my finance, shift in my family situation, and there will be shift in my health. So I can bring the Lord and let Lord take over, take over, take over us. But Lord cannot, he cannot do without us submitting him. We must be prepared. We must be God-fearing people. In the Bible, it says very clearly, Abraham, was a God-fearing man. He was following every commandment of the Lord. If the Lord has tested him, Abraham was ready without fail. Just to prove that point that what makes Abraham a faithful man of God? God asked Abraham that you need to sacrifice your only son, Isaac. Abraham did not ask question. He got himself ready. He got his son ready. And they're leaving home to sacrifice his son up on the mountain. But as he was leaving, remember, he's confessing the word of God. He says, when they're leaving home, they said, we will return, meaning him and Isaac will return. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And he had, he was a man of great faith. He had a faith. He believed in the Lord and he working in the word of God. And as they went up the mountain, going, basically climbing the mountain, and Isaac said, asked dad, you have the firewood, but where is that lamb that you're gonna sacrifice? Again, Abraham, with faith, he's saying, my God will provide. Who is this my God? Yahweh. Many of you know this, the power of God is a sovereign God. It's all powerful. You cannot measure his power. He's, he is able. He's got tremendous power. And they went up, he set up the firewood, and he brought his son 
to sacrifice. And the moment he lifted up that weapon, and the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, there is a ram caught by the tree. That is, do not lay hand on your son. There is a ram caught by the tree. That is what is for the sacrifice. And Lord said, you are a faithful man, God, a man of faith. Amen. So when you have faith in God and you believe, and going back to that scripture, John 14, 14, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And that is the Lord we're serving today. He is faithful. He's all-powerful. And he's omniscient God, God who knows present, past, and future. And it is omnipresent simultaneously. He is witnessing what Adiel is doing here right now. He is witnessing each one of you individually and precisely in your bedroom or at the altar, at the church, in your farm or garden. If you're listening to the word, he is the witness. And I cannot add anything to his word. If there is any shortfall on my behalf, I pray, Lord, have mercy. Let, let the spirit of truth and righteousness come before thy people. And Lord, I just say thank you. Then when we go back to the scripture, Mark eleven twenty four 24, again, I, I read. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask and when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Believe. It is not easy in humanly nature. We cannot believe. If I can do certain things, as Reverend was asked to go and sacrifice his son, it, it, for us, for me, and be a question mark that what is happening here? What is, how do I do such thing? Again, in the Bible it said, the mighty men of God, they went before the Lord and inquired of him, Lord, give me the direction. How do I do it? And whenever, when we seek the face of the Lord, the Lord gives his direction. He gives the instruction. He, he, he commands you. So when you follow his instruction, God's instruction, when you follow the commandment of the Lord, you'll see the mighty miracles will take place. But are we able to believe something that even not costing us anything? It's just your relationship and nurturing onto the pondering on the word of God and having the relationship with the Lord day after day, morning and evening. There were many people in the Bible that prayed three times a day. Many times they prayed. But for us, sometimes we get too busy too busy in our jobs, in our schools, in our sports, in our farm, in our family. We are too busy. How to cook this? How do we eat this? How do we plant this in the garden? But the Bible says, Matthew 6.33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We know that our God is the king of kings. We know that he's a faithful witness. We know that he's the firstborn of the dead. He's able. He's faithful. And his promises are, yes and amen in Christ Jesus. He says, if you go through the waters, I'm with you. 
If you go through the rivers, I'm with you. If you go through the scorching fire, I'm with you. Imagine our God who says, who promises us here today, he's speaking to you, each one of you today. If you are going through the scorching fire, God is with you. And you know when you are in the presence of the Lord, who can be against you? No one. Who can stand before our Lord Yahweh? He is faithful. He is on time. So when you believe, say Mark 9.23, anything is possible if a person believes. When you believe, you activate your faith. And the Lord answers your prayer. And and Lord is faithful. He is able. He will never leave you and nor forsake you. Amen. When we look at that uh, scripture again, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Prayer. In the Bible, you will see when you read from Genesis to Revelation, the mighty men of God, they all prayed before the Lord. They inquired of the Lord and asked God to intervene. David, many a time, he inquired of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to them through their prophets. And all that they needed, the Lord gave them the signs and wonders. That's, that's the powerful, that's the living God we're serving today. The Bible says, ask, it shall be given. Seek, you will find. Knock, it shall be opened to you. The Lord is faithful and he's on time. We may be saying, Lord, today, today I want this thing. Today I want to be healed. Today I want to be able to do so many things in one day. For an individual, as a human, it is impossible. But the Lord is able. He can make a way. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's the light of the darkness. As one of the prayers in the Bible, if you look at Psalms 4, 1, it says, I'll just read one scripture there. Answer me when I call. O oh God of my righteousness, you have given me a relief when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How short and sweet and simple prayer before the Lord. But you, you, you have to have that encounter with the Lord. You have to have that relationship with the Lord. The Lord is faithful and he's able. Now I've talked about the word of God, how God works. I'll just share the testimony that how Lord worked in the life of me as a Hindu family to receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior. I did not. I mean, I was one of the ones you can put chain me with the biggest bedrock and come, come to Jesus, come to this church. No way. Nothing will happen for me. I did the things which my parents, my great great parents did in Hindu. And as a son honoring his mother and father, do the same as the parents did. Many a time, we did not even have a reason. We did not have an answer. Why? Why are we doing this? Even themselves, they are all confused. But we still say, how are you? We are well. Everything is okay. But nothing is okay. There's always problems after problems. Yes, problems in Bible problems came. But the Lord showed us the way how to overcome that problem. 
Whereas before, I was in the dark. I did not know how to handle things within my own self, within my family. Then as time went past, I got married and I had my second child. We called him Daniel. And there was a complications in his life. And as usual, we all run to the doctors, get the opinions and doctors say, keep a few months, it will be all good. And then we will move on with that. But as a father, we, I cannot sit at home just sitting with that word that in a few months will be okay. I was running around with this priest, that priest. They say, go to the sea, go do this, do that, that it will be okay. I did everything, everything. And here is my son. He's growing one week, four weeks, two months, three months. It's going day by day. And there isn't any improvement. Nothing's happening. We're going to the doctors daily, morning, night. We do, we run to the doctors. We go to the priest, we call them home. Nothing is happening. And even my wife had to give the job away to look after the little one. He would not, he would not drink any milk in the bottle or would not eat. I gave, uh, I had to get up another job to make ends meet. So after my night job, I come home at 11 or 10 and I say to my wife, you know, go have something to eat. And she would say, basically, he hasn't eaten anything. How can I eat? Anyway, so I take up the kid <laughs> in my hand and try to, try to, try to nurture him. Remember that I haven't been sitting all this morning right from early part of the morning all the way up to 10, 11. I was working and working and working, try to make ends meet and then come home, then pick up my child and pray. Whatever I knew, little that I know at the time. As time went past and then I met one of the friends at one of the hospitals and um, we shared, I've shared about mine and he shared about his daughter. And he said, hey, Jesus, he healed my daughter. And I want to introduce you to him. And I believe things will come better. Anyway, after some time, we, after, I think it was after one year, we called the pastors home. They came home and they prayed with us and, um, and they shared the word with us. And the said make a bottle of milk for 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 the child and and we are looking at each other we said you know he hasn't drank for one year you know we, why are we making milk again but they said no make the bottle of milk and we did it so anyway we did it we gave it to the pastor a lady she picked up the child and they prayed over it and they they tried to feed him the bottle of milk and within a minute the mighty presence of God, the mighty miracle of God changed his life that he drank the whole bottle first time after 12 months. That was the first miracle. They came home for six days and they invited us in the church for our altar prayer and we prayed. And from that moment, my son started eating, walking, talking, Everything as a father need. I mean, you all are parents and even the young ones, they will be parents one day. And you will see the joy of a father when a child starts doing what he's supposed to be doing. As always, being a Hindu and as a honor and respect to our parents, I rang my mom and dad. Dad, I found the Lord and we are ready to receive him as a Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and um, I talked to my dad and mom, and my dad said, son, I've known you from the time you were born. You are not a man who will have to fly. You are my son, and they're my great children, and we love you. Likewise, 
my wife talked to her parents and they said, you are married, you've got a life ahead of you. And we know that you're not going to hurt anybody. We love you and love the children. And that was all I needed. And we received Jesus as Lord and Savior. And today, I can lift up my hand and say, hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to the Lamb of God. That very same child is, has studied, he's got his driving license, he's studying commercial cookery. He can never let you go without feeling. He's the most loving child of all. And I'm blessed a lot, no pride in him. That is the living God I'm serving today. And this is the same God who is saying yesterday, today, and forever. If he did the miracles in the times of Moses, he has done the miracle for me today, yesterday, and he is ready to do a miracle for you today. And he's already in the business of doing miracle for whoever is in, in need tomorrow. Amen. That is the powerful God that I'm serving today. And if there is anyone who is ready to receive their salvation, I will give you a minute. Have a think. You have heard the word. You have read the Bible. And you have read, listened to my testimony. Nothing of my own had done anything in this situation. It was the mighty, righteous right hand of God, the power of God that transformed the life of this Hindu family that is serving the Lord Jesus. He's our, he's our Lord and our Savior. And today, I have got no hesitation to speak the word of God, what has he done in the life for me, my family. And he is able, he's faithful. Going back to the scripture again. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And that is what I did we opened up our heart before the Lord. We have given the opportunity. We had given the Lord to come. Well, Jesus, Lord is not going to force anybody. He's not slack. He's giving us time after time, opportunity to partake of his word and the blessings that he has for me. We must be ready. Today is the day of salvation. I know there are many there who would like to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior. I will say a prayer. And if you are ready, wherever you are, however you are, the distance and time is not even an issue for my Lord. Even this very moment, we must make sure that we are confirmed that we're going to have eternal life. It may well be time is running out, but today is the day of salvation. Amen. I will pray. And if you believe, if you confess and receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior, then you may be able to contact our dear Pastor David. He will guide you through. He will nurture you. And we will even provide you Bible to read day and night and receive that salvation for yourself, your family, your neighbors, or whoever. And you may be able to preach the same gospel to your other dear friends. But today is the day. Open up your heart and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. I'll, I'll, I'll lead into prayer. And then after the salvation prayer, then I'll pray for everyone, whoever is partaking of this message today. So let us confess. Father God, in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus, Lord, 
the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Lord Jehovah, this day we confess, the Bible says 1 John 1 9, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Father, yet we were seen as you gave your son Jesus Christ. We acknowledge, we confess our sin and we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Lord, we pray that Lord, we open our heart that Lord Jesus may come and reside in us and lead us by the power of the Holy Spirit. That from this day forth, we will not be on our own, but we will be mm -hmm. carried by the power of the Holy Spirit. We'll be led by the Holy Spirit, convicting us to keep away from the sin. And we say, thank you, Lord, that we are born again. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We bless your holy name. And we say, thank you, hallelujah. Now I'll take this opportunity and I'll, uh, I will pray a prayer for everyone. And then I'll hand it back to uh, our dear pastor, David. Let us pray. Gracious heavenly father in the mighty and the holy name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, even this moment that, Lord, you carried this message to each and everyone individually and precisely with the conviction that, Lord, you are living God. That, Lord, that we have the fear of that creator God. That whatever we do in our thoughts, in our minds, in our action, must glorify your holy name. Lord, this hour, the Bible says, Father God, that Lord, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive and you have them. I pray, Father God, if there is any healing needed in the, anyone in their body, yes, I pray and I take authority and I command Every sickness has to bow down in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray if there is a need in the family situation, be total restoration in the mighty, in the holy name of Jesus. Lord, I pray if there is any need in their life, whether it's food, clothing, shelter, or transportation, whatever that is, Father, that, Lord, you will help them and you will make a way for them, Father God. And I say thank you, Father God. Thank you that you are faithful, you are able, and you are on time. So, Lord, I want to praise you so much. Lord, if there was any shortfall on my behalf, Father, on behalf of my family, on behalf of my people, Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And, Lord, even from this time forth, change the life of each and every individual that partake of this word, Father. Their, their life will be transformed totally and completely for the glory of the Lord, Father. And Lord, have your way. Even as Jonathan has spoken before this message, Father, I pray that you do a great and mighty things in his life. Move him to the next level, Father, and have your way. You are able. I thank you, Lord. I bless you. I give you praise. I give you honor and glory in the name of the Father and of the Son and the precious Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, I pray and ask with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.